All right, so I also want to talk about MLA citations so and, and quotations. So when we use MLA formatting, um, or, or as we've used MLA formatting so far in class, we've been using it um, to structure what uh, our essay looks like. So MLA formatting, you have this centered title, you have um, this page number with your last name up, up in the right corner, and then you have on the first page um, the, front in, the front matter, um, all that information um, telling us who you are, the author, and the context, and the date. But um, we also want to look at how quotations and citations are formatted. So let's scroll a little bit to find our first citation and quotation. So notice here we have a quotation in this sentence. So we have, we have this sentence. One of these improvements was the development of canals and steamboats, which, are, which allowed farmers to sell what has been previously saleable. <clears throat> Un unsaleable. Sorry, um, sell what has previously been unsaleable. So that's that's a quotation. Um, so because they don't want to plagiarize where they got that from, they're putting it in quotes, right? So anything you get from your external source has got to be in quotes, or else it's going to show up as plagiarized. Um, now, so that's that's how you incorporate a quote into a sentence. Um, if we scroll further, we see that the sentence continues on the next page and resulted in a substantial increase in a farmer's ability to produce income. So that's another quote. And it appears that that um, these quotes were actually um, taken from the same place, the same source. That source is here at the end of the sentence in parentheses, Dan Hoff five. So when we give a quotation, it's not enough to just give the quotation. We also have to tell where did this quotation come from? In this case, the quotation came from Dan Hoff. That's the, the author's name of this citation. And it came from the fifth page. So when you are citing a source, we want at the end, um, or when you're when you're quoting a source, we want at the end an in-text citation. So this is the in-text citation, parentheses with the author's name uh, and the page number. That's whatever the source is that he got that from. Now, who is Dan Hoff? What what's that source? Well, it should be a source that is included in the work cited at the end of the essay. So if you scroll down here, we have the work cited at the end of the essay. We have a bunch of sources. The third source here is Dan Hoff, Clarence Dan Hoff. He wrote a book called Change in Agriculture, the Northern United States, 1820 through 1870. So this source is what he's quoting from. So if we go back up there, we see Dan Hoff, five. That means he got it from the fifth page of that source. So that's how you're going to need to um, incorporate quotations with that citation here. This is that in-text citation. And then down here in the works cited, you're going to have the works cited citation. Um, a few things to note. There, in these quotes, they put a sick in brackets and they put a farmers in brackets. So what are those? So in this case with the sick, what that means is um, essentially that there was an error in the original quote. So follow the error with a sick. So if you're quoting something and you see an error in it and you correct the error, uh, put a sick there. Um, this one, this bracket, is adding a farmer's. So when we add to a quote, 
let's say, let's say a, we find a quote and the, the quote is substantial increase in ability to earn an income. But we want to specify that it's a farmer's ability to earn an income. Um, but it wasn't in the original quote. So adding it would be uh, a misquotation, right? So the way to add that would be to put that in brackets. So substantial increase in ability to earn an income, we add in brackets to the quote, a farmer's. And then it clarifies the quote for us. So that's what we need to do if we want to add uh, to a quote. There's actually also a way to subtract from a quote. Um, if you have a quote and the quote is really big um, and you want to um, only, only quote the relevant information, uh, you would remove some of, that, some of that quote by putting a dot, dot, dot. Uh, the dot, 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 that's called an ellipsis. Um, and you use that to remove from a quote. We can see there might be an ellipsis uh, used down here. Yeah, here we go. Um, quote, encourage experimentation, hear reports, observe results, and exchange critical comments. So this dot 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 shows us that there was some part of the quote in between these two words. So it didn't originally go encourage experimentation. It actually had something in between, but we added this dot 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 um, because that stuff in between wasn't relevant to whatever we're talking about in our essay. Um, another thing that's very important to note is that whenever we give a quote, we never want to give a naked quote. What do I mean by a naked quote? Well, any quote has to have um, it has to have has to be introduced. So in the first quote we went over, this was the introductory phrase that led us into the quote. Uh, scroll down here to another quote. Here's another introductory phrase um, that leads us into this next quote. Um, so so it's important never to just quote. Uh, without introducing the quote. Never just put a quote and um, put no explanation. We always want an introduction to the quote. And that introduction is usually referred to as a signal phrase. Uh, we always want a signal phrase to introduce that quote. Another thing uh, worth noting here is that um, here is an in-text citation, uh, hurt, 127. So they are citing from Hurt, page 127. Um, but if you notice, in the sentence, there is no quote. Uh, the sentence is, before 1820, the rural community accounted for 80% of consumption of farmers' goods. There's no quote there. Uh, what we have here is a paraphrase, um, which is to say that um, the information from this source hurt um, the source uh, that they're citing is, is not being quoted, but it's being paraphrased, which means it's being summarized here. So we can assume that this sentence uh, can something, something like this sentence, the information from this sentence uh, can be found in hurt on page 127. So we can paraphrase things like that. So um, it seems like uh, this author uh, found this information about 1820 and specifically this 80 percent. Um, so that's, a, that's an example of a paraphrase. It's also important, um, and this is, this is an aside, uh, it's important this is an aside regarding uh, some of the rough drafts that I've seen. Um, I want to make sure you guys always use transitions. Um, whenever you're changing the topic, uh, whenever you are 
um, introducing a new idea, whenever you're introducing a new paragraph, uh, or introducing an example or something like that, uh, we want to make sure that the that we are transitioning from one idea to the other appropriately. Um, we don't want to just jump from idea to idea. So, so here's an example of a transition. Uh, one of the biggest changes. Um, so we're starting off by by referring. Uh, to what the rest of the uh, paragraph is going to be about. And, uh, and the, the changes refers back to um, what, we, what we had previously uh, been talking about. So uh, here's another one. Uh, in this sentence, we're talking about improvements. And here we say one of these improvements. So it, we move smoothly from one idea to the next. We're talking about improvements. Next paragraph, we're, we're, we know that we're the next paragraph, uh, we're going to be talking about one of those improvements. So um, transitions can... Uh, really help the flow, essentially. So I want to encourage using transitions um, as much as possible. And I also uh, want to emphasize the use of signal phrases. So um, I also want to show you guys um, insect citations are covered by uh, this website. So the Purdue OWL, which I think I've showed you before, um, gives examples of, of in-text citations. Um, it also has an automatic MLA uh, source citer, uh, which you guys could use. You type in um, your URL, whatever URL you want to cite, and cite it. Um, just be careful if you use this. Try to make sure that it didn't make any errors. So just double check the work. Um, but here's some examples of, of uh, some citations that, um, some in-text citations. So um, these are all, all things that we can do. Um, Wordworth stated that romantic poetry was marked by an, a spontaneous overflow of powerful feelings, uh, cited on page 263. Um, notice that we don't put Wordsworth because we know that Wordsworth is where it's being cited from. Um, but here's another one. Romantic poetry is characterized by a spontaneous overflow of powerful feelings. Uh, and then we put Wordsworth to 63. Uh, we put Wordsworth because we don't know where this quote is coming from, so we need to specify where it's coming from Wordsworth. Uh, and then this one, this one's a paraphrase. We're not quoting, but um, we want to make sure that the reader knows that this is information gotten from a source. So we say Wordsworth extensively explored the role of emotion in the creative process. And then we give the page number where we're citing that. So we're paraphrasing that um, from Wordsworth, right? We're paraphrasing it from Wordsworth. Um, it's also notable that uh, we can cite, um, we can cite websites um, that don't have page numbers. Um, so in those cases, we just want to cite the author's last name um, and don't bother putting the, the page number because a website won't have a page number. Um, this will probably be for a lot of us because I think um, page numbers are, are actually, uh, or I, I think that websites will be a commonly cited source um, and the, and and those won't have um, an exact page to go to. So unless it does, some some websites do have page numbers. Okay, so that's uh, in text citations, and of course, uh, you also want to put the work cited. So this this essay that is quoting from Words, Wordsworth, we assume it has a has a work cited, and the work cited will include uh, that Wordsworth citation, uh, which will be. 
Wordsworth, William, Lyrical Ballads, blah, blah, blah. Uh, publisher and, and publication date, right? Okay, so that's um, most of what I wanted to cover regarding citations. So basically, when you turn in your analytical essay, uh, you're going to want your citations to look um, approximately like what we just covered. Um, that goes for the in-text citation where you're quoting, um, and it also goes for the uh, citation uh, in the work cited uh, at the end here. All right, so that's all for um, the citations and quotations. I'm going to... Uh, I, that might be the last thing that I post for a lecture for this week. Um, I'm going to think about whether or not I have some more stuff to talk about. Um, but otherwise, good luck with your analytic essays.